Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Mythlok with your host Nitin Nair. Today we are going to be looking into a new mythology whom we have not touched upon for quite a while and that is Tibetan mythology. As you all know Tibetan mythology is a great mix of both traditional as well as modern Buddhism combined with a healthy dose of Indian Hinduism into the mix as well and it also imbibes certain qualities of the ancient Chinese religion as well. And today we are going to be talking about one of the most iconic figures in Tibetan mythology the Palden Lama. One of the most outspoken female Buddhist deities, the Pandan Lamo, is known for her various roles within the confines of Tibetan Buddhism. She is regarded as a protector of the city of Lhasa, the Dalai Lamas of Tibet and the Gelukka order. Legend has it that she was invited to Tibet during the 11th century from India, before which she once reigned as a queen of Sri Lanka's demons. She vowed to kill her only son if he did not promise to lead the people of Lanka from great violence and cannibalism. The intense figure of Lamo is meant to represent the will to overcome obstacles that are the way of attaining the unity of wisdom and compassion. Her devotees would focus on transforming her energy into creative energy that can transcend the human ego. These images of violence are understood by initiates as sacred symbols of inner transformation in a compassionate religious culture that shuns every form of action, thought or word that might be harmful to other living beings. Palden Lamo, the only female member of the eight guardians of the law, is usually depicted in deep blue and has red hair to amplify her wrathful nature. She is usually depicted side saddle on a white mule crossing a sea of blood. The animal has an eye on its left rump where an arrow was fired by her husband after she killed her son and used his skin as a saddle blanket as he was destined to be the one to end Buddhism. She has three eyes and is often showing drinking blood from a human skull. According to one account, Palden Lamo was known as Remati when she married the evil king of Lanka. She vowed to end his reign if she did not convert him to Buddhism and prevent him from leading the people of Lanka to greater violence. She tried several times to convince him to renounce his wickedness, but he refused to do so. During this time, while her husband was out hunting, she killed her son as he was being labelled as the one who will bring an end to Buddhism. She ate his flesh, drank his blood and made a saddle out of his skin. She then went on to travel to Tibet, China, Mongolia and India before eventually settling down on a mountain in eastern Siberia. After she died, she was reborn in hell and she fought her way out. When she escaped, she stole a sword and a bag of diseases. She then prayed to the Buddha for protection and Buddha Vajrananda or the Tantric Shakyamuni appeared before her and asked her to protect Dharma and the Buddhist faith. Palden Lamo is often referred to as Masgor Gyalmo or Sri Devi. In English depictions, she is known by the monikers Glorious Goddess, the Queen who repels armies or the Queen who has the power to turn back armies. In Sanskrit, she is known as Sri Devi and Yakshiremati while also being known as Ukin Tengri in Mongolia. Some legends also say that the Goddess was named Remati when born. Palden Lamo has several magical weapons and an extended entourage that she uses to help in her task of protecting devotees and Buddhism in general. The weapons include a tally stick scored with curses that is tucked into her serpent waistband, a pair of divination dice, a skin sack full of contagious diseases and a bundle of red curses which hang upon serpents from the front of her saddle and finally a ball of variated thread that hangs from the rear of her saddle. Her saddle is made from the skin of her son who was a cannibal and it features a demon's upper skull and its jawbone at the rear. The reins and bridle of her mule are also made from poisonous serpents. Her mule also gazes over the past, present and future and the front and back of the mule are two attendants of Palden Lamo namely Makaravarka and Simhavarka. The former is a blue crocodile headed Dakini who leads the mule by its snake reins and the latter is a red dakini that guards the rear of the animal. 
Palden Lamo is a central figure in belief systems of Tibet, Bhutan and parts of Nepal. Being an iconic figure in Buddhist religious teachings, devotees still worship the goddess for protection even today. She is regarded as a ferocious motherly protectionist who has also been named as the official dharma protector of the Gandhan monastery and the Dalai Lama. Every time the spiritual leader the Dalai Lama goes somewhere, he carries a special tanga which is a scroll painting of Sri Devi. For centuries no one looked at this tanga which was also called an amulet and which was kept inside a sealed tube. In 1940 the current Dalai Lama who was around 7 years old when this painting was made was met by a large crowd in the city of Lhasa. When the Dalai Lama saw this image near the entrance of his tent he immediately took it inside and unveiled it. The picture has not been revealed for a long time and it was replaced in his case. As you can see the Palden Lama holds a very intrinsic part of the whole Buddhist faith and the fact that the modern Dalai Lama attaches so much importance to the presence of Palden Lama also makes sure and underlines the fact that the culture and the traditions the mythology the god and its importance is very much still alive in modern Tibet. The Chinese invasion of Tibet and other political issues have prevented it from flourishing but keeping in mind that the buddhist followers still hold palden lama very much high in regard gives hope that the buddhist mythology or the tibetan mythology will continue to thrive in the days that go by we will be bringing you a lot more such similar characters who have a high influence on modern day life and many others who have been forgotten and also a very big surprise in the coming days this is your host nitin naya signing off by reminding you once again that mythlook is a home of mythology